Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad and Spurge Pro. Today's video, we're doing a round three super coach preview. Um, I've been a bit indecisive, hence the late upload for my trades going into the week. Obviously, last night's game was pretty interesting. Dogs upset the Lions. Uh, a few players I want to talk about just in my squad in general. Um, they didn't see uh, coming. Wilmont, 69 there. Probably scored better than 69. Intercept a lot of play. They seem to use Wilmont um, exiting out of there a little bit more than McKenna. McKenna sort of didn't see the ball for a lot of period of the time. Um, stuck on the bench as well for a fair bit. So pretty disappointed this trade. I brought him in for Boitel, um from St. Kilda. Uh, he wasn't named for his second game. So I was sort of forced to grab cash generation. Um, and Noyam Jones was pretty solid down back to 68 and did a couple of nice things. So pretty happy with that score from him. Glad I held him now because the last two weeks he's actually outscored McKenna in total points for the last two rounds. Um, yeah, looking forward to tonight's game. think, uh, unfortunately, the Pies will, will get up. So Richmond have a free hit at it with the outs we have. So we're not expected to win. VC, Bonted Pelly, um, had a lot of clangers in the last quarter in particular. It was on like 65, I want to say, roughly at half time, And then just it looked really good. It's probably the best 89 you'll ever see. It's just the amount of clangers he had were ridiculous. And I think he should have at least got the ton. Um, so I'm pretty surprised he got scaled back some points. And uh, using Baker for that loophole of Hopper was actually perfect because now I get a 95 for that Hopper spot. So that's perfect. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit indecisive at the moment. I just put on Twitter, who would you field, McKenzie or, or Hollands? And I'm thinking I'm going to take McKenzie against North Melbourne as opposed to Hollands and against the Giants. So, um, another interesting thing is, um, I'm not so, sure what to do with my last trade. Um, Bruce 38. So, just quickly on Bruce, too, um, he's not a guy you want to bring in. He was just purely for DPP, he was really my sheasel. And Zeeble plan um, in, in case Zeeble went well. Uh, I've got to bring him in for Tanner Bruin this week, so that's, an, that's a no-brainer. Um, and then, yeah, eventually I'll send Bruce there so I can have Sheezel or Zeeble will be able to fill in a spot down back if need be. I can play around with those DPPs in re after round six. So that's the sort of plan I bought in for, um, you know, Zeeble was, I was looking at Horn Francis and Zeeble and to see which one did well this week, just gone and, Obviously, Horn Francis didn't do well, so I chose Zebul. Um, I could have got Cole um, Chandler, but I don't trust his long-term job security. I know he's going to make some quick cash, and if you started him, great. But I didn't want to field him or Bruce this week, so I had to replace a mid-pricer for a mid-pricer and not play Fergus Green, Bruce, or, or Chandler or something like that. Now, the problem I'm having a decision with, hence why such a late, late upload is... I cannot decide between one or two moves. Um, now I know Darcy, and you guys are going to give me a lot of you know a lot of crap for this. But if I get rid of Darcy this week for Cameron, I bank myself another hundred thousand um, for the week after, and it gives me two hundred grand to do an, uh, an early upgrade or or grab a mid price I didn't grab, or potentially sideways Ridley to Nick Dacos if Ridley does crap again. Um, or it lets me get someone like a constable to a Bose via DPP and send Gin Ginby into the midfield um, and grab a pod in Bose if he turns up again, which I think he will. Or I can do another sort of move where I trade out Callahan to Warpole because he plays North Melbourne. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I um, grab a decent midfielder there. Um the problem is I think Callahan, even with the shoulders, will do all right. His, his break even is stuff all. So I don't know what to do. I generally don't know, and I've got to do it by tonight. So his break even is minus eight. If he scores 63 at worst, um, he's going to go 32K. He's going to make money. He'll probably make it around the same money that Warps does. Warps might make an extra 20, 30K maximum, um, and I can grab him the week after with that spare money if I want to go Callahan up to Warpool and then I can do another trade. Um, or I hold Darcy. So Callahan or to Warpool, which they both are going to make money, or go Darcy Cameron uh, down from uh, Sean Darcy. And if you have a look at Sean Darcy's run, yeah, he'll probably go 150 this week and reset his break even. 
But it's not about this week. It's more about his long term. So he's got Roy O'Brien. Then he's got Wits. After Wits, he's got English. Uh, McInerney's not that great. And he'll probably have an easy run, these three. But do I want to hold Shrek against his next couple of opponents? He doesn't do too bad against Adelaide. Last year against Wits, he absolutely did horrible. Um, so, and the year before, I don't think Wits, I think that was the year Wits had that ACL issue. So, do I want to hold on to him? I'm I'm really not sure um, that I do. I can bake an extra 100,000 um, that way. And I can probably grab Warpool for a 360, which is no different to people grabbing Settlefield at that price that he's at at the moment. Um. Uh, and Nank, he'll be up against Nank, who's actually a pretty decent opponent. It is wet in Melbourne tonight. I don't think it's currently raining, but he's going to go up 40K. Um, and Darcy's going to drop money. So I make sort of 80 grand on that trade, plus the 100 grand that I actually bank for next week. So he's got McInerney, then he's got Rowan Marshall, um, then he's got Draper, O'Brien, then he's got uh, probably Hickey's back by then. And then he's got Proust and, and some easy Ruckman here in, uh, what's his name? Anyway, uh, that's that's the thoughts. I'm really not sure. I'm probably at this stage, I'm thinking Darcy Cameron because he allows me to um, have 200,000 for next week and I can do a lot with that. So it looks something like this, complete the trade um, and use a boost the week after so to sort of get my team ahead burn a bit of trades, but long term it's the cash generation is, is more important overall for this team. And Darcy Cameron, I can swing forward, bring in Max Gorn potentially for R2 and have good cover and radically can eventually get out at the side. So that's what I like about that move. So ideally it's Cameron versus Callahan or Warpool and Darcy. I'm not sure. I think they probably combined to get you the same sort of points on field, but I'm making money here. I'm making money here. Whereas Warpool are making money and Darcy I'm losing money. So I'm sort of two up um, and making 200,000 or I'm grabbing Warpedo for 60 grand cheaper than what he's going to be next week. But overall, I think this is a better money move and I am going to regret getting rid of Darcy, but I just feel more comfortable in Darcy Cameron's role without, Mason Cox there at the moment as well for the next month he's going to miss. Um, and I haven't named an extra Ruckman. So my gut says use the 200,000, bank that, um, and then you can make an early upgrade, bring in Bose somewhere maybe at, at, at a potential D3 spot, upgrade Ridley to Dacos if Ridley goes bad or Doherty goes bad, and sort of use the money that way, um, which talking to myself into that now because – if I do the Warpedo move, just for your guys' sake, <clears throat> this is I'm over analyzing everything right now. To be honest, and this is why I didn't do the video earlier because it, it's been rattling my brain. And this what the only thing I really hate about Super Coach is being so indecisive that you're trying to look for the long term goals here. I could do something like this where I go filter. Always filter your players if you're trying to look for them. It's so much easier doing it that way. And then just players I can afford is also really handy. And go Warpedo. Um, but the issue is I have 39,000, right? And um, let's say I want to do some upgrades and downgrades next week. I really can't. I've got no money to play with. So hypothetically, Darcy does bad again. I'm probably just straight swapping to Darcy Cameron, who I could have got for 465 as opposed to 500,000. And then I can't do any other upgrades anywhere else. I can't do anything with that backline spot um, or anything with that in, in that matter. So that's why I don't like the Warpool move. A 39 grand is not enough to move two players that you don't want to do well. Like well, Hypothetically, if, if Dacos does well tonight and Ridley doesn't, is 39 grand going to be enough to go Ridley to Dacos? No, it's not. But $200,000 is going to be enough to go from Ridley to a day cost. And yeah, I miss out on him tonight scoring 145 or something stupid like that, I'm assuming. Um, but I'd certainly be seeing or seeing day cost today, uh, tonight because we don't tag. He's wet, so I'm not sure his efficiency will be as high. 
But I also think Darcy Cameron at that price is is a now or never. I wouldn't be buying him for any extra money. Um, I don't like paying that much money for premiums. But like I said in this video, thirty nine grand. If, and if you're anything under fifty grand, it's not not a viable long term solution for you if you're week after. All you'd be doing is sideways trading. So I feel like at least Darcy, you're making a hundred thousand. Yeah, you're going to regret it this week because Darcy. Probably averages better this week than Darcy Cameron, but at the same time, over the next five, six weeks, I'd probably prefer DCAM uh, averaging a little bit more than Darcy Cameron. Sorry, than um, Sean Darcy. Too many Darcy's in this video. So that's what we're looking at. So Callahan does scare me that if he does get injured, um, what do I do there um, kind of stuff. So last minute, if I feel like I'm getting bad vibes from it, I can always put Hollands into the game for um, Finn Callahan. Um, that is the worst case scenario if he is a laid out. Uh, I'll probably watch the, the pregame show just to see how he's warming up, see what the shoulders look like, et cetera. And, and really, really, it's, it's, it's a good option having them in the same game because, you know, if he is a laid out, Hollands is playing. Hollands takes that spot and it doesn't really matter. So I think I've just talked myself into it. That's the that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to bank the 200,000. It's funny. I, I, I was going to give maybe a, a SDS a, a text or a call and say, mate, what, what do you think of these moves? Because they're just always good to get a second opinion from other super coaches that play this game and overanalyze the shit out of everything as well. So, um. This is this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna bank two hundred thousand, um, and hopefully I can grab Warpedo next week and potentially Dacos the week after, and then just leave my trades for a little bit until these cash generation cows go up a fair bit. I do like my structure. I do like my team in general. I don't like that I've wasted five trades over two rounds. Um. But I do like my bench compared to some other people's teams in general. I think it's a pretty stacked bench. Um, I feel like they're better options than Alan Davey. I'd rather have the DPP for Josh Bruce there. I love the fact that not many people have Hollands that I've seen anyway. I know he's owned by 20-something percent of the competition. Um, but I do like a couple of the pods I do have in the side, like your Liam Stocker, your Settlefield, who's probably not a, a, a um, pod now. But I do like the team and how it's going. And I, I think I got most of the players that you needed. And I don't think I'll um, need a loop. I think there'll be a loop every week. So I'm sort of glad I've gone cash generation over a permanent Nick Madden from the Giants as a 102 rookie. I can always downgrade him once Radigalier, um makes, oh, please make 100K. But we're really struggling at that. So... Uh, yeah, a few options you could even next week if Samson Ryan gets named for a third game, which is really dependent as a Tigers fan. I can't get a gauge on it. Um, he, his spot could be gone by Cumberland at any point in the season. So he might be a rookie we downgrade to if Radaglia doesn't make his break even next week and well, it doesn't look like he can anyway. But I do like the Cats fixture over the next three weeks. So I'd be sort of holding a guy like Radicalia and hoping he comes good. I hope you're not playing him as an F6 or else you kind of stuff this season. But his next three games, I sort of want to hold on to him. He's got Gold Coast, Hawthorne and West Coast. And I think the Cats win the next three. Um, and then after that, his rough run gets a little bit tougher um, in Sydney. But um, I think I'll leave the video there. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys held McRae. Um I was still pretty 50-50 on it. I, I think I told one of the guys in the comments not to trade him out, really. But um, that is the team going, and it's around, I suppose, captain-wise. I don't really like anything this week. I don't like green against um, the Blues. The Blues still got a pretty good midfield. I do like Laird in a showdown um, against Port Adelaide. I think he'll still get it. I know Will and Drew will probably go to him, so I am scared of a tag because Giants didn't even tag him in round one, and he did bad. But I think um, historically he, he does play well against him. I don't think I've got a really solid option there. It was Bont or Broke. But, look, he's got 133, 93, 125. And at this stage, I'll take anything over a 105. Um, I suppose you guys are probably looking at the same things. We're probably not trusting Doc against Giants. Uh, Green, I don't think, scores well against Carlton. No. 
settle field, oh, that'd be such a cool captain option, but I don't think I have the kahunas to do that. I don't really like anything else. Rowan Marshall against Essendon, maybe he'd be a sneaky a sneaky walk out because he does play Drake, but he probably smashes him around the ground, to be honest, and in hit outs. 55 concerning, that's probably with Ryder, though. So, but it maybe just doesn't have the ceiling against S, and maybe that's a bit of a worry. So, I think the obvious statement for me is Laird in a showdown. I think that would be a lot of heat on them. There's 0 2, I think. Yeah, so I, I think Laird has to carry him across. You know, he'll get plenty of the ball in the midfield, and I don't think William, William Drew will do too much. Um, to him, maybe they go to someone else like a Dawson plays and gets tagged, maybe. But Hinkley doesn't tag, he didn't tag Dacos last week, and that's the only reason why I didn't bring him in. Was I was actually scared off that comment, him saying, um, he would tag Dacos and he didn't. So I bring in Ridley because Ridley's fixture looked pretty good, and I'm hoping Ridley does really well and sort of outscores Dacos because Dacos at the moment is anti pod, but hopefully for only one more round. Hopefully that was an information um, overload. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Sorry again for the late preview. These Thursday games sort of make it really hard to decide what your Friday team is going to be like. And I want to go into the round of an accurate side of what my trades are. Because if I did it on a Thursday, my trades wouldn't be what I said they were at the end of the day. So hence the late one. Hopefully my Tigers get up tonight. Hopefully your team gets up over the weekend. And I'll leave this one there. Catch you on the next one.